Hello again, I'm Barry Devlin, and I'm here to introduce the last of the three architectural patterns in this series. Previously, we untangled the data fabric and deconstructed the data lake house. Now, let's unweave the data mesh. ThoughtWorks' Jamak Dagani, and I hope I've pronounced her name properly, introduced data mesh as an alternative to what she called the centralized paradigm of a lake or its predecessor, the data warehouse. She did that in May 2019. ThoughtWorks is an international consulting and systems integration company, so the architectural pattern for data mesh has a strong focus on implementation, the development and operations aspects, perhaps even to the exclusion of detailed functions and data stores. We can see this in the diagram here. Governance, standards and domain-driven design and delivery get top billing. All good things, while the usual stores and transformation functions are hidden in the infrastructure platform. The domain-driven emphasis in the picture leaves it largely to the reader to figure out that the underlying technical approach is based on microservices thinking. It becomes clear that the data mesh has a very different structure to either a data lake or warehouse. Decentralization in both technical storage and responsibility is fundamental to this architecture. In this third blog post, I explore the drivers and structure of the data mesh architecture and examine the underpinning concept that a fully distributed data storage architecture is preferable to the traditional centralized one. Where do relational databases fit in? What about data virtualization? Does a mesh demand a common integrated model? And if so, can it replace a centralized data store? I invite you to take a look at my final blog post in this series to unravel the pros and cons of a data mesh. Let's try to understand if or how it could replace your existing data warehouse or data lake.